asked me how I made the test bar for the tailstock alignment video. Um, I promised him I would get to a video, so this is going to be it. Um, the one that I made, which is right here, this is just a protective cap I made to um, protect the machined area. Um, this is one inch in diameter. The only problem is you need a steady rest to be able to machine the centers in the ends of this because the through hole on the spindle of the nine inch lathe is only three quarters. So what I'm gonna do is use a piece of three quarter inch stock. And uh, so for people that don't have uh, steady rest, you can see how it's done. Um, the one inch is just a little bit beefier, a little bit bigger, I like it a little bit better. Uh, plus I'm gonna use aluminum, uh, just because I have a lot of three quarter aluminum lying around rather than three quarter inch steel. So uh, obviously, I, I would prefer the steel just because of the fact that it's not going to gall as easy if you drop it. It's not going to dent as easy. Um, it'll just keep a little bit better. So we set up on the bandsaw and we'll cut ourselves a piece of aluminum. Alright, we're set up on the bandsaw with the our aluminum in the vise. We're set up to cut a 12 inch piece, which should be plenty long enough. You can go longer if you want. Uh, up to 18 inches you're probably not going to see any more of a benefit if you make it longer. Um, this is just my little import 4x6 bandsaw. Uh, these things work really good. It's actually one of the the, um, the best purchases I've made besides obviously buying the lathe and the drill press. But this beats a hacksaw like you wouldn't believe. Um, and it is also way cleaner and a lot quieter than a, a chop saw with a fiber disc that I was using before. So. Let's get this going. Helps if you plug it in though. That's the cut that it makes. Pretty straight, we'll face it off in the lathe. All right, before we face and center drill a test bar, you wanna do a preliminary uh, alignment of the tailstock. The easiest way to do that, throw a dead center in here. Before you put anything into your Morse tapers, stick your finger in the socket clean out any debris that's in there that's going to throw you off. Also take your uh, dead center and make sure it's all wiped off and clean. So insert that into your headstock. Bring up your tailstock. Put your dead center in there. Make sure we're seated. Okay, lock your tailstock down. And now you want to get something that is straight and relatively thin. So I use a regular single sided razor. You can also use a six inch scale or anything else you got. But what you want to do, make sure that you have a good sharp dead center on both sides. Take it and just pinch it between your centers. Now if you show any deviation, any tilt, either side to side this way or vertically this way, you know you're misaligned. So if you're tilted, right now we're pretty much perfectly vertical, so my vertical alignment's good. If you're tilted this way, any, which you can see from the top, um, you're going to want to move your tailstock, the uh, the set overs, those little allen heads on the side, move them around until you get that perfectly um, perpendicular to the bed of the lathe. Which you, if 
your vertical alignment is off, there's not much you're going to be able to do that do about that without shimming. Um, and it's not really going to make that much of a deal, um, but you do want to make sure that you're not uh, cocked side to side on that. Let me get the chuck on here and uh, we're good to go. So before I get the chuck and everything on here, just a quick word about chucks. You can use a three jaw if that's all you have, um, even if they run out on the three jaw chuck is, you know, going to be three to five thousandths on a good chuck. Um, on a on an older one, it's going to be more. The, the center will uh, your, your center jaw kind of um, tend to want to walk towards the center anyway. Uh, if you do have a four jaw chuck, definitely use that so you can dial it in. What I'm going to use is going to be my three jaw chuck, but this is um, an adjust true chuck. If you look on this side of the back plate, these little hex heads. Uh, Allen screws here. There are four of them on each side. You see each one's numbered. Um, what that is, is that governs the position of this back plate. In other words, unlike any other um, back plate, this one that doesn't have a register that goes all the way through and around the chuck. In other words, the, the, the chuck hole is, say, this big on this outside ring but the the um the register on the chuck is only as big as this inside circle um what these are are screws that go through and sit on this register here so what you can do is actually move the position of this entire chuck on its back plate now you don't have near the movement that you have on a four jaw chuck so you, know, you probably have maybe um, I don't know, eight to ten thousandths or so movement side to side and up and down, um, which will allow you to get something to run true for whatever given diameter. Obviously, you're not going to put a, a uh, an offset piece in here and try to get it to run true. But um, like I said, this one's made by Buck. I love this chuck, and I did get it at a good price. If you're going to buy um, only one chuck, if you can only afford one chuck, by all means, get yourself a four-jaw chuck. Um, just because this is so versatile, you can use this for straight turning, regular round turning, and also for uh, you know your your regular your offset turning or turning uh, square stock or whatever. Uh, it, it's a little bit longer to, to set up than a regular three-jaw, but if you can only afford one and you're going and that's all you can afford um, definitely get a four jaw because you can use it for everything it does take a quick uh, like I said a little bit longer to set up but um, if that's all your finances would allow that's the way to go so let me get this all set up and uh, get to it alright now we're gonna adjust our chuck um, to get this thing to run true or as true as we can get it uh, you can see we're running out about three thousandths or so, so right about there is my low spot. So, um, set that two and a half thousandths. Or one and a half, rather, sorry. No, we'll get everything to equal zero, and we should be pretty, pretty damn straight. Um, so, just like a four jaw chuck, you can tweak this by these little. Allen heads here to get this thing to run true. And just like a four jaw, you have to loosen one side and tighten the other and work itself against it. Hi. 
And like I said, the surface finish on this isn't is a little rough. So right there, we're in about a half a thousand, which is more than enough. So let's get the center drilling. First, I'm going to face this off. And zoom in here. Okay, make get the light set for the right speed. This is aluminum, so you can turn it relatively fast. Whenever you face, always lock your carriage down and you'll do your feeding in with your compound and then when you go to take a deeper cut, I mean you do your feeding with your cross size, sorry, and then when you go to take a deeper cut, just feed in with your compound. There's the center. Now I always like to just go in, compound a little bit, get rid of that little tit in the middle, and then feed back up. And there you go. Bring up your tailstock, your center drill in there, this happens to be a number uh, three. down. WD-40 is a great lube for drilling or doing any work in uh, aluminum, so give a little squirt. Now when you send a drill, go through this straight shank right where the taper part starts. Keep going in until you get all the way at the very end of the taper pipe. Don't go further than that. You want a nice 60 degree uh, cone for your center to drop in. Get that out of the way. Now here's where a good old quick change tool post comes in. Ha very handy. I'm gonna take our facing tool out. Unlock the carriage. Put in our regular turning tool, lock it in, give it a quick turn, and all I'm going to do, really quick, very gently, I can actually go a little bit more than that. radius that edge. That way there you don't have any sharp points to catch your fingers. There you go. Now we're going to do the same thing with the other side. Um, and then I'll show you what we'll do afterwards. Okay, now to get this as accurate as possible, we got to set it up to run on centers. Uh, this is a, called a catch plate. Um, you can see the notch right here. And uh, what that's for is to hold the lathe dog which is just basically a clamp that uh, clamps on your bar. Now, if you notice, on these self bends, even though the headstock is a number three Morse taper, if you get a three Morse taper dead center, it sticks out pretty far. Um, if, if you get a uh, three MT to two MT reducer and use a, a two MT dead center, this will be back a little bit. But you can see, I still have enough room to be able to engage that dog. So, if you don't have a catch plate, not a big thing. You can use, uh, in other words, this center is, is far enough out that I can put on either my three jaw or my four jaw and sink this in and engage the, um, the lathe dog in one of the chuck jaws. That'll also work for you too. Um, 
So basically we're just going to set this up on centers. Take a little bit of uh, a bit of whey oil, put it in the center that's going to run in the dead center. And the reason why you want to use a dead center is because a dead center has no run out in it. A live center will have a, not much, but a little run out in it, depending on quality. So we'll extend this out a little bit. Lock it down. Put some tension on it. Now what you want for tension is you want to be able to still be able to turn it, but it's going to take you a reasonable amount of force to be able to turn that. That should be a tension setting. All right about there is good. And you always, always, always want to lock your tailstock down. Now when you tighten that, it's actually going to take this barrel and actually when it clamps down, it'll straighten this barrel out because it tends to sag no matter what you do. All right, so let me get the camera overhead again and we'll uh, cut that register on. Okay, now you want this barrel out far enough in this angle, uh, the, your two angle, tool angle rather, um, enough so that you can get all the way to the edge in between this center and there. Now we're just going to turn, you know, about an inch, inch and a half at most. Uh, no specific depth, it just needs to be, um, this is just to make the bar here a um, consistent diameter all the way through. So turning on centers is the most accurate way to turn. So, I'll touch off there. And uh, you, want, you want a nice round nose tool, you can power feed. You just want a nice, consistent, and smooth cut. With WD. go. Nice and smooth. Now this is going to be the area where your dial indicator runs along. And uh, that's it. That's all for making the bar. Um, label it. Like I said, I made a little protective cover for it so that this doesn't get chewed up. Um, keep it and uh, use it all the time. I know it's been a little long-winded just to make a little test bar, but that's the way you do it.